What's up guys, my name is Khan and we're back today with more Railroads Online, joined by Heist. How's it going Heist? How you doing today? We're back on the crap doing Railroads. Well. Doing well on the crap and uh, I'm sitting here looking at both of our fine locomotives and- Oh, do you like my uh, thumbnail? Do you like this? Was, it, it was this nice, is a good thumbnail. It was a good it was thumbnail nice, shot. Nice thumbnail, wasn't it? Yeah. Uh, very good, but you know, uh, yeah, they're both uh, number one. Yeah, and, someone uh, mentioned that feel... we should name every engine number one on this railroad just to add <laughs> to the crap confusion. So to be like, engine number one, you're cleared down the main line, and then no one knows what that actually means. <laughs> engine number one, go ahead and bring him back. Yeah. What? Come on. <laughs> <laughs> Wrong engine number one, but anyway. Um, so yeah. yeah, we're gonna run to the smelter today because pretty much have to go to the smelter in terms of uh, progression here. We're al already at the uh, sawmill and the logging camp. Have to get to the smelter first and then we can run to the iron mine. So we're gonna try and make yeah. a line and we're gonna use a historically accurate work train. I don't know what that means. That's heist. That's the script heist gave me. So that's where, <laughs> there you go. That's yes, where well at. done. We'll, we'll, uh, we'll discuss payment after this. Yes. <laughs> so I wanted to do, uh, you know, make a little work train and bring it along while Khan gets to actually lay the track. And we're going to act like we're actually supplying the real rail line. And we can talk about how railroads are actually built and were built back in the day because it's actually a really neat topic. And it's something that gets glossed over in railroads online a little bit because, you know, you're placing splines point and click and you don't have to agonizingly sink spikes in, you know, one at a time. So I thought it'd be fun to, you know, just add a little flavor to the uh, the episode as we go build track. Oh, yeah, in case you didn't notice, I've uh, I, I've, I've sort of changed the freight depot. Um, I forgot to mention the shunt yard here felt stupid and we needed a water tower and we needed fuel. So I just added that here in place of the shunt yard um, so we can fill up with fuel and stuff as we come through the freight depot. We'll have to build a shunt yard at some point in time on the other side for storing trains. Actually, we'll probably have to do that pretty soon because we're going to have cordwood cars at some point and then we'll have, you know, one too many sets of cars. Other notable things, Betsy's water goes up, uh, coincidentally. A lot of people pointed that out in the comments. Don't know why. It might be a bug that, from uh, the spline that update. Is, that is how it works, sir. So, um, Wait, what? I got comments on that too. That is how that works. So, so the how does that water... How does that work? The water doesn't go up. How does the... the, the well, yeah. so it's a, it's a little bit of hacky steam simulation uh, on, on Kume's end, but what he's simulating is that the water level in the boiler is constantly rising until it hits 90% via the injector. So if you have uh, water in the tank, it will continually raise the water level as the engine's working because the injector is constantly putting water in. And that's not actually how you'd run one, and that's not exactly how it works, and the flow rate's wrong. But uh, the water level is just the water level in the boiler. So once you drain the tank on Betsy completely, the water level will stop increasing and it'll start to decrease as you're using the steam. But it's actually just simulating the injector putting water in. Okay, so I'm sitting at Betsy right now. Regulator's off, brakes on, the fire temp's at 400, there's fuel, and the water level's going down. But as I use the regulator, you're saying the water level will go up? Um, the, t the tank may have finally run out if it's going down, because it should continuously just go up. Oh, you're saying the water level is water level in the steam chamber, not in the tank itself. Yeah, it's in the boiler, not the total water level. Eh, it's just like the other uh, engines. Ah, I yep, see. Yep, yep. So we don't have a tank water level indicator anywhere. No. No, you've just got to go in and uh, check the hatch like like we do on the real one. <laughs> well, I'm standing inside the tank right now, so that... Well, you know, that's that's another way. I mean, that, it's working out quite well. That. Well, there's two beds, so, uh, you know, we can sleep we got next to each other here and... Uh, We're ready. You know. Dude, sleep over. Railroad yeah, exactly. sleep over. So, okay, so how would that work? If they were working on the railroad, like, they wouldn't come back every night, would they? Or would they just sleep on the railroad, or did they... It depends. <laughs> it really depends. And we've got a we've got a wood stove here and everything. This is great. With a tea um, kettle. Get some with a tea kettle on it. Some you know, tea on the do. wood stove there. It's a fun little detail. It really depends. You know, you hope that you would make it to another terminal or you would make it over the road or that. But uh, you know, back in the early days, there was no hours of service laws. Uh, in the book that I've talked about a couple times on the channel about the early days on the Rio Grande, the big engines and little men, uh, they talk about how even in the early 1900s, there was still no rule for how long you could work. And so crews were on duty for more than 16 hours regularly, all the time. Ahead, here we go. Um, 
And so it really, you know, ended up sometime with some shifts and some train crews and, and some ways that events unfolded on the railroad made a lot of sense to have a, a bunk or two around. So it really uh, helped aid with crew comfort on those long journeys. I feel like that would just be really cold in the winter. That is what the stove is for. <laughs> yeah, it's just everybody huddled around uh, the tiny little wood stove. Right. So we have um, the stoves actually do burn coal. Uh, we in the 1009, we actually hung out in that car pretty frequently at my start of time at the museum. Uh, we had it in service, got the car in service and pulled it behind the train and everything. And uh, I remember doing a boiler wash on the 346, our class 70 that's been modernized at the museum, where we take all the plugs out and wash the boiler out up at the water tank. And it was uh, about five degrees Fahrenheit out, which is uh, something minus in Celsius, pretty, pretty low, you know, decently below freezing. And um, yeah, it was absolutely cold. We got wet. It was awful, but they got the coal stove burning nice and hot in the 1009. We finished up our work for the day, went and hung out in the caboose and had a beer. Uh, and that was awesome. You got warmed up so easy. It was just nice and cozy in there. Because, you know, the walls were lined with asbestos because that's uh, that was the thing to do in the day. <laughs> yeah, safety. Uh, yeah. Well, you know, it was just one of those things where they didn't really understand what they yeah. were doing. It was this sort of like... You know, hey, this doesn't let heat, you know, escape. Sounds good. But one of my favorite moments uh, working on the steam engines back in the early days of my time at the museum was pulling the old packing out of 491 out of the throttle and packing is the stuff that like seals a valve basically, make right. sure that the stem doesn't leak. Uh, and pulling the old packing out, and it was really weird and really heavy. And I asked my boss what it was, and he goes, yeah, that's rope made out of asbestos and lead. You should probably wash your hands afterwards. And I was oh like, my. wait so a they, minute, they what? Didn't, they didn't have any sort of, like, rubber seals or anything like that. I guess it would all, like, melt nope. or whatever. It was all just, yeah, like... all asbestos, you know, oh, whatever goody. it was. I mean, lead's super soft. Asbestos is really heat-absorbing and everything. So it made sense for the time and era of the locomotive, you know, and... Uh, Safety culture is important, folks. Make sure that, uh, you know, if you're going to be handling dangerous things like that, make sure that you've got all the proper briefings and understand it before you get into it. Because, uh, you know, our safety culture wasn't the best when I started, but thankfully it's really good now. All right, so we're going to have to stop here and build a Y. That's right. Because there are going to be some times when we're going to want to come from the freight depot out and vice versa. So... Exactly. Is there specific, like, specific, wow, specific, specific, Jesus, what am I even saying? Is Are there any, like, specific, um, like, Y dimensions? Is there a history to the Y? Like, is there, like, back in 1802, the first Y came out in Kentucky, you know, and it was, like, you know what I mean? Or I, I wish I had it for you. I don't think I have any specific dimensions on that. And unfortunately, the biggest thing that we would have that would be different and special would be the size of switch. But in Railroads Online, we have the one switch, and that's the switch we have to work with, so that's the switch we'll use. Guys, we found um, we found Heiss's limit of knowledge. He does not know the history of the Y. I don't y. know the history of the Y. Yeah. Oh, oh, no. I would tell you that uh, the, the switch in Railroads Online is a very large switch. It is very high speed uh, and bigger than a lot of the stuff used on the narrow gauge. Oh, ooh, that, that, uh, that track's a little kinky there. Is that me. spicy? It's, is that... It's a little... It's a... Little spi it's a it's a fair bit spicy. Ooh, it looks like heist track. Ooh, yeah. that's not. Yeah. Ooh, that's not gonna. That's not gonna be good. That is. No, gonna, it's, uh, it's that not is gonna, gonna hurt. That is gonna hurt a small child. Um, yep. When it comes around the corner. <laughs> All right, yeah. you wanna? We might have to back the train up a little bit here. Otherwise. Okay. Feel, yeah, we don't want to uh, drop it off the bridge. I feel like we might have to build the the Y starting like actually on the bridge here, which will be interesting. All right, so you got three cars there. You're on a service. You obviously would have a caboose. That would be for you know living whatever commute crew comfort etc etc all that nonsense so what would you have what would they be bringing on the three rails as they're building track like what would they bring on the the cars just wood so beams and you gotta, like you gotta bring everything that you're gonna need with you really you know most everything of course dirt is usually a plentiful for uh, for doing the actual grading but typically a work train would have a car full of ties you'd have cars full of rails I mean, and typically, even on the narrow gauge, they'd be a lot longer than this. But I wanted a cute little train because we've got a cute little engine. So, you know, got to do that. And we can't load them anyways. So, ooh, that's a, that's a floating switch. That's a little interesting. Um, yeah, it'll look it'll look good at some point. I'm just trying to we'll, see we'll, if we'll dimensionally this out. makes any sense. Yeah, we'll, we'll figure it out. It'll be fine. 
Um, I think the more interesting thing that's something that we haven't seen in Railroads Online yet and, and is a neat piece of Railroad history and some of the fun stuff we have at the museum is all of the support and outfit cars that would go with. Because not only do you need to bring your supplies for the track, you need to bring a lot of people to build the track with you. Right. And when you're going out and building a railroad for the first time, there's no way to get there other than the railroad that you came in on. And so you would take all of your crew by train. And so there would be bunk cars with beds, you know, which basically a box car with a bunch of racks in it, almost like it's a submarine or a, or a Navy ship, something like that. Um, we have at the museum, we have models of a kitchen car, uh, which is one of the cars that's open up on display all the time. It's got a, a big coal stove oven in it. It's set up with a galley and you're ready to cook food, even on the narrow gauge, special, you know, modified box car. Um, there would be, you know, office cars, all sorts of things for every different role to support the crew as you're building the railroad. And it's a neat piece of history that doesn't end up being represented a lot. Because, you know, in train simulators, typically there isn't any need for that. Um, on model railroads, you know, some people will include it and some people won't. But, you know, everything's already built, so there's no need for that infrastructure. And when you're talking about moving, you know, everything you need and all the people you need to make it, that's a lot of stuff. And so right. there were work, work trains that would be assigned... And sometimes they would be out for days and run back and forth between, you know, and the end when, of track. When they were and building these paths, the it was all like hand dug, right? Like they would hand dig pretty much every every passageway and all that. I mean, dynamite obviously to blow some rocks up and stuff, but like for the most part, it was just hand digging your way through, you know, leveling terrain with shovels and pickaxes and that sort of shovels, thing. Shovels, picks, and dynamite. That was the majority of it back in the day on the narrow gauge, because you know. When you're bla hanging off the canyon, blasting the side of the wall for a big shelf for the railroad to run on, yeah, you definitely had some dynamite, but there was plenty of stuff that was just absolutely dug by hand, and a lot of the tunnels on the narrow gauge that uh, that were around were absolutely just dug by a bunch of dudes with a bunch of pickaxes, That's... and it's hard, awful work. So when you guys, okay, so you have you have a half mile track at the Colorado Railroad Museum. Yep. Um, when it needs track repair, do you use modern equipment, or are you guys still hand digging out ties and like hand hammering the spikes in, driving the piles and all that? Or we we do a bit of a mixture. This is also a little a little, a little spicy. This here. yeah. Why is that looking I so spicy? I, it looked so good until it didn't. I think you need one more node in the middle, maybe. I feel like you're I right. Know. I think I need literally one more node here. Yeah. Yeah. So. The museum, a lot of what we do is pretty traditional, but we do have a couple of modern tools that help out. Um, we'll typically pre-drill our spikes because the ties we have are really, really hard. And driving a spike that is not pre-drilled is awful. Right. Uh, I've only driven spikes into pre-drilled holes, and that is still absolutely awful. There's videos of me doing it on the channel, and I look like an idiot, and I feel like an idiot. I don't have the proper technique. The guys who can really swing a spike mall are impressive. Uh, and that is such a talent. It is a lot harder than you would ever imagine that it would be. Um, but and we that's do that, have... That's that, basically that big sledgehammer looking thing that's like... Big sledgehammer, but with a really long pointy nose to really make the pressure hit in on the top of the spike's head. Um, we do have a couple air tools. We have an air spiker... We have an air tamper, uh, but really, I mean, by and large, we're tamping with shovels on the ballast uh, and we're driving spikes by hand for the most part. If we have a lot of work to do, like we're, we're doing a big job on the main line or something, we'll definitely break out the air tools just to get it done quick because, you know, we're interrupting our own trains, right? Even at the museum, that's what happens pretty frequently. Um, but uh, yeah, it's uh, it is a lot of hard, heavy manual labor, and the track crew that we have at the museum is fantastic. Okay, so more important question. Obviously, uh, we do we do some track scouting, right? When we yep. when we look for ways to lay track, who did that on the railroad? Did some guy come along, scout the route, and say this is the route you're gonna take, and like follow this? But then like obviously there's stuff that would come up in the field, like oh there's a bunch of granite here that we can't actually blast through or whatever. Like how do you you know, someone's got to make those decisions, right? Yeah, absolutely. Definitely intense geological surveys were done. 
uh, months and years before there was even dream of the railroad being built. Like the Rio Grande, Denver and Rio Grande, the first real narrow gauge railroad in Colorado, 1871 with our little Montezuma as the, uh, the number one engine. Years before they were incorporated, they had surveyed, they had figured out everything. We're not gonna lay track but they had figured out the routes that they were going to take. And, and, you know, as they expanded, they determined more along the way. But yeah, absolutely. Geological surveyors, people on horses, right, Con? See? Oh, yeah, see those uh, horses? That's what I'm saying. Red Dead Redemption. Let's go. Come on, let's do it. It's waiting uh, for it. They definitely did the first things because, I mean, you got to figure out what the grade's going to be, right? Because you, you know what your locomotives are or what locomotives you can get ordered and all that stuff. So you got to be able to figure out how much stuff you're going to haul because you got to figure out if you're going to be able to turn a profit and you got to prove that to the investors. And uh, thankfully, it was boom times in the 1800s with the, uh, you know, everything with all the gold rushes going on and silver mining in Colorado being as mad as it was in the day. So it definitely uh, was an easy sell, but even with uh, limited cargo, but they had to know what the routes were going to be very early on. So Railroads Online is kind of odd in that aspect where we're actually just kind of going as we do. Maybe we'll do a scouting pass or a survey pass, but half the time it's like, well, we'll just kind of lay the track as we go and see what happens. I both love and hate this piece of groundwork right now. Do you see this? Like it's Yeah, it's uh, got some Z fighting. It yeah. uh, looks a little silly. I'm, gonna, I'm just going to... I'm just gonna. Does it? Is that? It's not considered groundwork. What is it considered? Gets deleted with all. All right, we're just gonna have the switch floating for now. I'll figure out what to put under there at a later point in time, <laughs> and uh, more, and update it. Bridge, you might as well like slightly lower or something. I don't know. You might as well do a check actually, um, and drive into the the sawmill there. Let me know how spicy this is, and then I'm gonna go s extend this line straight. Um, all right. We will we will check for for the level of picante. The, the bridge has changed colors since I last. The bridge has changed it. dimensions too. Like everything <laughs> changed about the bridge. Look, look at that. Oh ah! no! Ah! Oh no! Ah! I made a mistake. Ah! I made a mistake. <laughs> Where's your tender? Uh, it is. Oh, uh, it's clipped underneath me in front. Okay, of Okay, well me. I'll just I'll just let I'm you gonna, fix that. Don't worry can about I, it. Can I pull ahead? Yeah, no, you can, I have. You have you have welded the Montezuma to this bridge because the collision model suddenly appeared. Listen, and our cars are rolling away. Listen, our train is rolling uh, away. Well, you know, I was just I felt kind of bad heist that it's been taking so long for me to get anything done, and like I felt like you needed something to do, so I was just <laughs> so so you you derailed me. All right, I was just providing I see you with some. I see where your priorities at. Some That's fine. useful stuff, you know, along. So, the giving me an excuse to put smells like Kenosha in the uh, in the soundtrack as I yeah. overdub later. <laughs> Technically speaking, you have to pee in a cup for that instant because you were driving the train. Uh, right? I'm pretty sure that we will find the engineering department accountable for this incident. I so disagree. When we go to report it, I'm I pretty disagree. sure because uh, someone, it's never someone managed to drop fault. a bridge on my head. Well, it's not my fault. You shouldn't have been there with your head. Yeah, definitely one thing when you're actually laying tracks is that uh, you clear the trees and lay the grade first and then you put the track down but you know it's fine well i used do to do a, that a i used to put top, but... i used to put grade down just to sort of plan my route and make sure that i could actually like do the route you know yeah and exactly. then i would go back and demolish all of it and put demolish all the trees and then put fresh grade and then fresh track it was always like a four four layer process yeah. now it's like a two layer process just tracking which, which for the sake of for the sake of a video game is absolutely the right move i mean there, there are a lot of cool things about the railroad, and there's a lot of cool things about the logistics of track laying, but the uh, physical tedium of actually laying track, uh, you, pfft, no, you don't Can need you to simulate that in a game. imagine if we had to hammer each individual tie-in and stuff, like, as we're going? Dude, it, I mean, it's, yeah, no thanks. There's a, there's a great historical landmarker of, like, one of the most ridiculous feats of track laying. No, when... no, 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 no. You can't, you can't, you can't go this way. You got to go back, go through the sawmill, do one of the loopy loops, you know, go, get some. What, what, what? Well, we got to test the doing? other side of the Y too, you know? Oh, uh, yeah. I see. Do, I one, see of, what do you one of those fancy loops, you know? Plus, I'm going to, I'm going to replace this with another bridge. Okay. Well, yeah. I'll let you do that. And then, uh, and look at, look at, the look at how strong I am. I'm pushing the entire train backwards with... That's uh, it's impressive. Just with it. Oh. Oh no. This is a bad. Interesting. <laughs> have you? Have you? Did you fall into the frame? Are you did. part yeah, of the Montezuma? 
Can you get my switch, or are you just gonna start? Okay, I'll get my own switch. Oh, I'll All get right. your switch, sorry, but I got, right. I got, I got. No, I got, I got, I got, got out. Excuse me, I sir. No, no, okay. sir, it's sir, fine. sir. It's excuse fine. me, sir. Let me just, let me just. No, thank no. you. No. Okay. Thank okay. You. Thanks. Oh, 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 oh. Hey, you wanna, you wanna, you wanna line that to the, to the diverging route there, friendo? Thanks. Man, we would be peeing at a lot of cups if we were running a real railroad. Yeah, that's uh, yeah, that's half the fun of playing train video games is knowing that you can just be cavalier and just have fun and not worry about the safety piece of it, which is so present and so important in the real thing. Okay, that's so that's like one of my favorite things about these games. You guys have your own railroad, the you know the Colorado Railroad Museum, right? You got your own little track. So there is no abiding safety body over that section of track. You guys own the track. You can do what you want on the track. If I built a train track in my backyard, could I just put trains on it and no one would care? Well, so it depends, asterisk, on many a thing. and it <laughs> Because of course it does. Because there's always regulations. That's the secret. There's always regulations. Um, so it depends. How big is the gauge? What, what gauge track are you doing? Are you putting a three-foot gauge line in your yard? Well, you might be subject to some regulations. Are you going to run steam engines of any size? Well, you're probably going to be subject to some regulations once again. And I'm going... I, I thought we had a tie into it. No, no, we do right there. Okay, never mind. I'm, I'm not being stupid, I promise. Um, the FRA, which is the Federal Railroad Administration in the United States, who oversee most railroads out there, they oversee anything that is bigger than two foot gauge, two foot gauge and larger. Um, and they and only if the railroad crosses a public highway or waterway, There's so bridge two foot or grade railroad? crossing. Two foot gauge is a thing. Yep. Like and for freight hauling two foot gauge or just for like, you know, those toy trains that you ride around at a fair? No, freight hauling two foot gauge that in Maine in the United States. There oh was two God. foot gauge common carrier freight and passenger railroads and there were a couple others as well elsewhere so even smaller than this three foot gauge in the game there was two foot gauge that did the same thing for the same purpose it was cheaper all that sort of thing that seems and crazy. the fra regulates them right but if uh, if it's two foot gauge or bigger you have a public grade crossing be it a waterway or a roadway the fra regulates you so if you're smaller than two foot you're not regulated by the fra but if you're running steam if you have a steam engine, it's usually falling under the state boiler code if it's not under the FRA the jurisdiction. state Even boiler code. <laughs> the state boiler code. Like, for us at the museum, we are actually not under the Federal Railroad Administration's jurisdiction because we do not have a public grade crossing. It's all entirely on our land. So despite us being three-foot gauge primarily, and we have some standard gauge too, uh, we're not regulated by them because we don't meet their criteria. We're an insular operation. We don't cross any public anything. And so we just follow under the state of Colorado's boiler code. And so the state Colorado boiler inspector comes out and he inspects our locomotives and gives a certification for uh, three years at a time. And then he comes out three years later and, you know, checks it out as a, an industrial boiler. He witnesses a hydro test to make sure that the boiler holds the pressure it's supposed to. And he does an internal inspection with us to make sure that everything's all good inside the boiler, which is pretty much exactly what the federal guy does, too. But they have a couple different requirements for that are a little bit more specific for things regulated by. the. And they FRA. check that for any engine that you're running, basically. Yes. So even if you had a little live steam engine, it would be underneath you know, it's still a pressure vessel. It's still but pretty if I much had, a But if I had a steam wheels, engine yeah. that runs on like a six inch or a one foot gauge model railroad in my backyard, I'm, I'm just good to go. Possibly, but you might still be technically required to be inspected by the state if you're in the United States. I don't know how it is in Canada. So I have you no might, idea okay, how it is. But... I would never, I've never looked into it. So kind of, kind of going to uh, tell my wife things. now that I'm going to put a steam train in the backyard. Just saying. You, you, you can, and people do. There is actually quite common, you know, seven and a half inch gauge or 15 inch gauge locomotives out there that are really, really cool. I've got some friends that have them and they're, uh, I really want to do a series on my channel where I build one from scratch and machine all the parts, but um, I'm gonna need a lot of time and resources and materials and money and things to do that. So that's a pipe dream down the road someday, but yeah, I think, I think, I think, uh, it would be, I remember when I was younger, we went to those fairs and you always like ride those trains that you kind of like straddle it like a horse, you know, and it's got like yeah, a little, exactly. 
like six inch gauge rail or whatever but the steam locomotive is like a fully functional steam engine like it's actually burning a fuel i don't know what kind of fuel those things would burn i can't imagine it would be coal fire some of them are some of them are, co are coal like mini some of tiny them little propane. like coal fires some like the size of your butane. barbecue yeah exactly there are plenty of little engines like that and the funny thing is live steam engines like that get even smaller and they get surprisingly small the smallest one I've heard of is a double O gauge, which is a British model railroad size, where it's basically, I think, 1 to 96 or, or 1 to 87. Someone's going to murder me in my comment section for not knowing double O. I only know HO, which is the American counterpart on the same gauge of track. But anyways, I digress. In, you know, about 1 to 87 size. I had an size. HO train set growing up, by the way. Did you? Okay. So, you know, HO scale. Yeah. My they dad built it for the... us. And then me and my brother played it. And we had these two, like, looping tracks. And they were on separate electrical currents. So, we could each control one. And it was amazing. That's awesome. Oh, yeah. Dude, I love, I love model trains. I've got a couple myself. Um, but, you know, super fun. But in that scale, Hornby has made a working live steam engine that runs on steam in that size i don't even know how you could like uh i don't like i that's how much water could you store like you'd be storing like a couple like 100 milliliters max maybe right not, not, not even. much you have to stop it all the and time and then you boil yeah. that in like what two seconds you know like it would it would boil so fast yep it's kind of crazy the, the first size where it's really common is in uh g gauge which sometimes is known as uh, depending on what scale it is, could be G or it could be F. A lot of the Colorado narrow gauge engines are in F and three is what it's called, but they're one to 20.3 as the scale. So about, you know, a 20th of the size of the real one. Look at how expensive and they this run bridge on... looks, man. This is, sorry, not to interrupt, Dude, but this, this not this... to interrupt, but this bridge looks, this, this is rad. This looks really cool. This is expensive. This is expensive track laying right this here. This is definitely expensive rail rail alignment right yeah, now. Yeah, the crap railroad had it's to fight. They made a lot of money in the gold and silver ages, okay, of narrow gauge, right? Right. They, the, the they crap railroad, found it, a way like to turn a turd into gold, and as a result, this is We had a at. lot of them, so, you know. Had, yeah, exactly. <laughs> All right, I'm going to start dropping down, I guess, because might as well at this point. Yeah, I think you're you're at the kind of the restriction there. We're pretty close to it, so starting There's a to bring tight down corner, the height. But it'll good. work. Well, it can't be too bad. It can't be as bad any, as anything the Uinta Railway did. So, whoops. Yeah. This is good. Now you're actually like right behind me here. We're gonna have to figure out how to get down to the smelter. Yeah, I'm gonna snake the work train up so you've got more materials at the ready. Naturally. <laughs> Can you imagine if this game had material costs or like train track laying costs? I don't oh know my how God. You, would... you would you would have to be much more methodical in plotting your alignment. We would have not have used a bridge right here. <laughs> no, exactly. And you'd have to like, uh, you know, you'd really have to um, like do a lot of logging runs initially to just get the money to actually expand to a new industry. Like it would be a really expensive process absolutely for sure and I, and I mean it was expensive back in the day the uh the cheapest thing was the, was the labor at the time so <laughs> that's a, that's how different the times were back in the day though so, that said there were some awful things done to railroad workers on the section crew which is what you would call folks working on the railroad back in the day working actually on the track itself uh they routinely used to stage accidents right before payday what to routinely. get a bigger payout so you wouldn't they wouldn't have to pay oh so, oops, my god we accidentally set the dynamite off too early and we blew up half the workers wow Good god yeah that was stuff that the railroad used to do back in the day it was pretty cutthroat i take it people didn't get paid weekly then uh no <laughs> you wouldn't be done with the job in a week well one of the stories i was starting to tell earlier was about big track laying feet when they were building the transcontinental railroad across the united states it was completed in may of 1869 linking east and west for the first time you know they had one railroad leave california in the west and and one in the east that uh, ended up meeting up in utah at promontory point but along the way they had a milestone and a sign that i believe still exists to this day where they laid 10 miles of track in one day that was the record and i don't know if it's been beaten by hand else. by hand 10 miles of track with the train behind it you know, it was something like four or five actual section trains running 
back and forth, you know, passing each other where they could on, on passing tracks that they put down, but bringing all of the supplies to the where how, the railroad um, was being built. How long were, like, when you were when they're doing these section trains, how long were rail sections? Because nowadays, I know you can see those big, long trains that have, like, a rail section that actually, like, is bent between multiple cars and will go around corners and stuff like that. Right. But they obviously didn't do that back in the day, right? Or did nope. they? Nope. Rail was originally 21 foot sections and later about 30 foot sections so it was what you could fit on a flat car at the time and you would have joint plates uh, you know with fish plates and and bolt holes and everything right every single one of those and and you'd run the joints and it was jointed rail all the way down which is absolutely completely antithetical to what we have these days which is called continuously welded rail yeah where the rail chunk. segments themselves are like 420 or 421 feet long so 400 foot chunk of steel that weighs 136 pounds per yard because yes, cheeseburgers per hamburger or whatever is our favorite unit of measurement. <laughs> uh, listen, okay. I'm, I live in Canada where the units of measurement make sense. Well, you know, I don't understand I can, why Americans that are all like, per meter for you. they're all like, yay, imperial measurements. And I'm like, okay, but, but why? And I'm like, I don't understand why you guys want imperial so much when like, you know, all the metric stuff is just divided by 10. That's It's just adding zeros, you know, like... I'm right there with you. I will say, I said something about this in my one of my recent videos where we we're talking about cab curtains and being cold in the locomotive. And I made a lot of my fellow Americans very, very mad by saying that I thought metric made more sense. Metric definitely makes more well, sense. That, that doesn't mean imperial is worthless and bad. It just means that, I, you know, dividing by 10 would be easier than multiplying by 12. You know, <laughs> I could do that math in my head. It's Imperial very easy. makes Imperial makes every engineer in school have to learn two units of measurement. And yes, it is very sad. And yeah, then you're always nice converting. You're always like, like, let's be real. We should always be running on Kelvin. I mean, come on. Let's, let's right. Let's, 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 let's do, degrees Kelvin. Let's degrees do it. Kelvin. Let's just do it. 200 sounds really hot. Yeah, but it's, it's not. It's a balmy 273 out. Yeah, it's, yeah. <laughs> so, it's yeah. just a balmy 273 today. Uh, <laughs> Wait a minute. That's freezing. Yeah, we got we got <laughs> Jim with the traffic report. Yeah, I've seen six cars crash into a wall. They clearly don't have winter tires on. Everyone's just like not understanding what's happening here. <laughs> but it's 273 degrees outside. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm trying to make this smelter line along this left mountain because I've never done that before. Okay. Um, it's gonna have big sweeping bridges because money, money, money. Um, <laughs> send we, it because we got it, you know. And it's a two degree. Uh, ah! Oh, did I kill you? You dropped me. I was trying to chop the trees for you. Oh, oh well. God, no! Khan! Damn did, it, Khan! Did, did I drop the train? <laughs> did, did, yes, did you, you did. Did you forget to put the brakes on, or was it just on? No! Auto? You, the spline was so long that you deleted yeah, that the was spline like a 500 the meter. Dirt. That was like a 500 meter spline, I'm not going to lie. <laughs> well, that well was... the, train, uh, the train is now in the dirt. Oh, good. So, well, it's a car yeah. now. It's, <laughs> it, it's, uh, it's fine. And just like that, the first car was invented. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. It's a steam-powered cart. Does oh. it move? I don't know. I don't think it'll work. If I don't it's, think uh, it'll work without. Yeah. Okay. Well, yeah, I this will... isn't. Uh, yeah. Uh, do you want to yeah. rerail? I have a spline that's ready to be connected, but I have a feeling trains. <laughs> you don't want to send the train to space. This is gonna be a big sweeping bridge, Heist. We're gonna have lots of sweeping bridges on this server. Nice gradual two percent. I, I like the sound of that. I, I'm thinking that the crap railroads, right? Here's my lore for all those people. Okay. Founded in 18 whatever. I don't know. Something. You, you, you'd be 18 whatever. 18 yes. whatever. The crap railroads made money through illegal silver smuggling. Okay. All right. And Sold. as a result, and, and, and in the prohibition days, they were obviously smuggling alcohol, right? And as a result, at, naturally. they laid some magnificent groundwork at 2% grades and sweeping curves so that when speed limits finally were abolished in 1906... Um, you know, the, uh, the crap railroads could really accelerate and, uh, take it to the next level. Exactly. Long story you know, short, I'm trying to build it for when there's no speed limits on trains. You, you wanna, we wanna, we wanna go fast, people. Yeah, we wanna go fast. Look, this is, I, I gotta up. say, I, I do think it's funny, I can't remember if it's 1905 or 1906, but the year you picked is the, uh, the year that knuckle couplers and air brakes were mandated, mandated. <laughs> really? <laughs> Which, yeah, speed limits removed, cause now we have brakes. Those are important. <laughs> I still can't believe. Okay, so there are people legitimately climbing over cars to tie brakes on a moving train at like 20, 30 mile an hour. 
down. Uh, yeah, and even faster. <laughs> down just mountain track. Like, yep. Yep, just yeah. all sorts of sketchy, you know. That, and that was I, early on. And But mountain track, I mean, they, they figured out pretty early that they wanted air brakes. So they added straight air brakes, which were kind of uh, not necessarily worthless when you're talking about comparison to men with sticks running on top of the train. Right. Uh, but compared to automatic air brakes, which, you know, everything that I've ever run has because, you know... Uh, not now your, your trains, did they come with automatic air brakes or was that a modernization after the fact? All of our trains came with some flavor of air brake. 346 originally would have just had straight air. She didn't have automatic, but everything right. got retrofit pretty early. Uh, and then 491 and 20, I believe, were built both with air, automatic air brakes. See, this looks pretty. Look at this nice, nice. You come into the valley, you got this beautiful bridge here that's just extremely expensive. Oh, I'm liking this. Now, uh, million dollar question: Can I run the train on it, or are you going to? No, I'm not going to delete this bridge. The, the bridge, will, the bridge will stay, sir. You are, you are okay. clear. Engine well, number one is ball. clear. Down track, Beta Niner. I don't know what track designations would have been. Oh, I don't have a tender with me. That's fine. <laughs> you have I just the train. forgot to forgot to put the draw bar in. It's fine. I hooked everything else up. Dude, this looks nice. So you come into the valley, you know, it's a nice sweeping turn. We're not going to do anything weird, fancy. This is going to be the only line because we're going to do all the maneuvering from the smelter to, like, the iron mine and stuff, oh, you know? didn't get my caboose. Didn't oh, get my caboose. Oh, my goodness. It's fine. It's what fine. It's fine. It's fine. Uh, oh, I, I double linked. No, stop. Oh, you're there. Yeah. You, Interesting. You, wanna, you, wanna... you left it full reg, <laughs> full speed. Well, you know, I you thought I was going to be able to... I don't know, do full, full rank, full speed down a hill. And he's like, oh, I gotta go pin the caboose. I gotta go get the caboose. <laughs> Next question of the day. Railroad ties. Yes. Modern day railroad ties, I've seen a lot of, right? And yes. they seem to be like, uh, you know, sometimes they're made of concrete if they're in, it looks like in cities or stuff like that. Um, Otherwise, they seem to be mostly made of wood. Uh, but is there like a specific wood that is used, like a hard oak or something, or is it always like a soft wood? Does it matter? Would you, could you literally just take a log from the side of the thing, cut it square, and bury it, and call it a day? Like, was there? It depends, and everything you just said is yes, actually. So it it really depends. Early on, the ties were all hand hewn ties. So okay. some dude with an axe chop down a tree and cut it vaguely square. And so you'd see, you know, a lot of the early ties, really early ties on the railroad, they only planes where the rails were going to go. And the rest of them were still, you know, raw log, basically. Right. So they would make sure it was flat where the track was going to go and, and where the ballast was going to go, and then kind of went from there. And then they kind of squared things off a little bit better moving forward. And eventually you got milled ties that were actually of a, a square profile and a certain size. You know, usually for standard gauge, the ties are usually about eight foot wide. For narrow gauge, they're about six foot wide. And usually something on the order of eight by eight or 10 by 10, depending on uh, inches uh, in profile, depending on exactly what flavor they are. But definitely, uh, you know, they used what they had originally. And logging railroads would just use whatever they logged. Uh, and moving forward into the future, then they started to be more picky about what kind of ties they had. But usually it was whatever was cheap, softwood was fine, though sometimes it was critical to make sure that you got the right tie. One notable railroad in Colorado, the Colorado Midland Railroad, which was the first standard gauge railroad to go through the Rocky Mountains, which is an insane railroad that has a million great stories. Um, <laughs> that they went bust at shortly after World War I, which was kind of how uh, insane trying to do standard gauge in the Rockies really was to show it. But they built an alignment where they needed and specified oak ties, hard oak ties, so that they could guarantee that they could run fast speeds around their crazy, curvy, super elevated nonsense alignment that they, they had built. So, Interesting. yeah, it depends on, you know, exactly what you have. Uh, and these days, a lot of railroads are moving to exclusively concrete ties, uh, unless you're underneath a crossing, in which case they tend to still use the wood so that they, you're not pouring concrete in the concrete and all that sort of stuff. And uh, the, the concrete ties just for durability's sake, like once you put a concrete tie there, it's generally not going to wear out over time. They, they do need to be changed out after, you know, 
a certain amount of time, but there's less wear, like you said. They're better for the environment because they're not treated with creosote, which is uh, pretty nasty. Uh, it turns into a pretty nasty acid when mixed with water. Oh, that's uh, good. That's good, oh, considering all the rain know, that happens just in general. And in, just everywhere. Yeah, just everywhere. so definitely it's, it's definitely good to get to the concrete ties, but... Uh, you know, wood ties are still cheaper and easier to deal with in some aspects, and and regaging with wood ties is easy, and and they're less prone to cracking than a concrete tie is. But you know, there's definitely merits to both. But these days, a lot of railroads are only doing new install with concrete instead. Okay, so steel bridges versus wood bridges, right? I'm, I'm making a lot of steel bridges here. I generally use steel bridges for longer bridges. Was that just uh, a cost dealio, like? cost and what they had because i mean you think about when ah con that's that's your fault okay the brakes on the montezuma are bad that is clearly your fault i'm gonna just (laughs) i'm just gonna walk over here i'm just gonna put this cup down right here right next to i'm just gonna walk away and let you (laughs) give me a cup that's that's uh that's fine how's how's life on the can you back up can you uh, you know what? I have the I have the reg wide open in reverse right yo, yo. now. Yo, <laughs> yo, hold on a minute. Hear, hear me out, okay? Oh boy, oh boy. Warp Am I gonna back play, to the respawn. The Montezuma? Warp to the respawn. Grab the porter, okay? Oh, and go tug. Okay, and tug uh, it. I see where your head's at. And yep, I feel like you it. might be, you feel like this is gonna come out. Okay, we uh, Betsy may save the day. She yeah, may not, Betsy, but Betsy, she may. Let as me well. know when you're back. I'm gonna keep going with the bridges. Okay, well, I've made it here in Betsy. Uh, I'm gonna try and gently knuckle into the uh, the rear of the train here and All right, I'm uh, try I'm... to not shove it any further down the cliff. Full reverse, come on, Betsy! Well, that was. Is it working? No. Is, is it... <laughs> I'm gonna, gonna leave Wait, it hold in full on, reverse. Hold on, hold on. What if me... you do full reverse? Okay. Gonna make sure the brakes are Just on. full reverse and make sure all the brakes are off. That's really good. Okay, are you full Montezuma's reverse? Montezuma's also still full reverse. Yeah, is it? Good. It they is, both got boiler yeah. pressure and fuel and all that. Yep. Are no, you ready? No, the fuel's actually out, but the water's, uh, the water's cold. They're not cold, so. You ready? Oh, God, what are you going to do, Con? Yes. Ah! Ah! I, I thought okay, it was going to work. I thought that, that was I, less catastrophic than than I was. Anticipating I actually it. thought that might that might work. It didn't, but it was close. And uh, thankfully, Betsy is struggling up this two percent grade with this massive train that's behind it, so <laughs> it's not running away too terribly fast. <laughs> so I made a curve originally of a bunch of smaller splines, and then I went and like deleted all the smaller ones and made a final curve. Look at how smooth this is. It's looking pretty. It's like nice. a gradually increasing radius. Like it just is beautiful. You come into the valley, we're just spewing black smoke all over the forest. You know, probably lighting some realisms. trees on fire because we don't have a fire catcher. It's fine. We are burning wood in a engine that only historically burned coal, but we have a straight stack with no cinder bonnet. Yeah, it's uh, yeah, we're it's good. Fine. No, it's we fine. would we would burn down this, and we're elevated too, so the wind will carry it over top of this entire yeah. beautiful forest. Yeah, right? the forest uh, forest would burn down. <laughs> yeah, Smokey the Bear says only you could stop forest fires. <laughs> yeah, Smokey the Bear says put a cinder bonnet on your choo choo, please. Yeah. That's awesome. So a cinder bonnet, basically, in my understanding, is like you have a, an inverted flap, right? So that the smoke goes up and then has to go down and then up again to get out. Is that... Um, so it really depends. There's a lot of different stack designs. The most simple cinder bonnets, or um, why can't I think of the other word for them? The, uh, the most simple of cinder bonnets. Ash catchers? And stack... Ash catcher? No, it's um, stack screen. No. Cinder catcher, cinder bonnet. There's another word for it. I know it. I promise you. Dude, I'm telling it's you, fine. crap railroad. Look at this bridge budget. We've got a we've got a hefty <laughs> All the bridge bridges. budget. It's great. Um, the most simple ones are basically like just a, a mesh screen that goes over the top of the stack, and that prevents the big ones from really getting violently sent out, and then they break into smaller pieces, and the smaller ones don't burn as long. Uh, and that's the most simple variety, but they can get quite complicated into all sorts of different redirections and baffling and all sorts of stuff, depending on just the amount of cinder and uh, hot glowy thingy uh, mitigation you need. So <laughs> this is what I'm thinking. I want to do this. Spark arrester. Spark arrester. Yeah, no, that for. makes sense. Yes. That, that would make sense. 
Okay, I want to do this, and I don't know, don't, don't drive out yet onto this piece, but what do you think of this? And then we loop back around and go underneath it. Oh, lordy. Okay. We are it's... at, uh, we're at the mouth of that canyon. Yeah, that and this is a 2% down bridge. Okay, so if we're going to go underneath it, we would want this to turn pretty early, like turn to the left, yeah? Yeah, yeah, it's going to go straight and then turn to the left. Okay, yeah, it's gonna and, be shorter. And to, yeah, shorter so than this. This is so just bad. so we yeah, could walk and kind of scope it out. That could that could be fun. And then go yeah, down into that canyon, enough... and then do like a U turn in that canyon, and then come back underneath this, and then into the smelter. Yeah, the U turn, as long as it's the right height, should be wide enough. So we, yeah, I, I think that would be neat. All right, Heiss. It took a while. It did. It but really we, did. But we did. It's all two percent, which was more of a task than I thought it would be. But I think it's wonderful. Yeah, I'm excited to see what it looks like from the locomotive. Yeah. Uh, and then, of course, show off my uh, <clears throat> handiwork. Oh, yeah. Heist laid the loop itself. around the smelter. That's not a permanent thing. We just we got to the point where, like, we just need to finish this so we can actually, you know, make some trips to the smelter. So uh, Heist did a loop around the smelter. I haven't s inspected the track condition yet. Uh, um, it's not very good. Prior it's, to the uh... smelter, we're all, like, 50-degree radiuses minimum, which is, you were saying, 35 degrees, so that's... Yeah, a... 50 meter. Or 50 degrees. meter, sorry, yeah, yeah 50, 50 Which meter. is, you know, for, for these little engines, is, like, like, absolutely plenty for an aero gauge, you know? So when we even get the really big stuff, you know, it'll, it'll still work pretty well. This is actually, the like, the coolest the route yet. to the smelter, though, I think we ever could have... It's pretty rad. It's definitely bridge heavy, like you were talking about. But yeah. as I was showing you pictures, I mean, it, it's like the old Rio Grande Southern. They, you know, they didn't use steel bridges. They used massive wood trestles that were bigger than the ones we have in the game. But they used a lot of bridges. So it's not absolutely unprototypical to do what we did. And I'm excited to uh, to get the train run over it here. So it's yeah, this is just it's a lot of bridges. So we had to kind of abandon the go underneath our own track plan here because the uh, the canyon's just too. Dude, this shallow. feels like we're gonna fall off. Like honestly, it just feels it's so tight. Like it's, it's pretty sharp through here, even as it sits. Definitely. Yeah, and and it's downhill. You're just picking up speed and going quick. We'll see if we can pee in a cup today. No, <laughs> oh. <laughs> and then it snakes back here. This is pretty cool though. It just wraps around the. Uh, we need to get trains long enough to see it on the other end, you know, and have like just that a massive. That would be cool. That would be so cool. Probably only you would see him. I don't know if I would see it on the other end as a client, but as the host, you know, yeah. Well, you can awesome. sit in the middle, and then you'll see them all, right? That's this is interesting though. This is going to be like our main line for, you know, all the ironworks, coal works, smelter. Everything comes back to the freight depot via this line that's why i wanted way. to do it yeah. at two like percent you know nice and gradual turns two percent keep the resistance as low as possible so that you know yeah. when the speed limits get removed yeah we can run as quick as we can oh yeah we're still towing betsy i was like what's that on the back yeah, yeah. what's behind us oh yeah betsy's still knuckled in so it's fine yeah it's crazy how uh, how much track you actually have to lay though to go down only like maybe 50 feet but at two percent it's a lot of track right for every every hundred feet you go, you go down two. So you know, yeah. fifty feet. You know, it's a it's a long 2, time. Twenty five hundred feet just to get like, you know, yeah, yep. it's crazy. It's the whole thing. Slight changes. No train makes a sharp turn or a fast change uphill. They all need the slow changes. We don't have a turnaround loop though, so you're gonna have to push out. Yeah, we'll have to shove out. Yeah, we'll have to go back. That'll be a smidge weird. To the freight depot in reverse. Really Interesting. So we'll have to build that. some crazy setup here at the smelter. I haven't really thought of how to do it. This turn gets a little spicy there towards the end, but it's still like 55 degrees or something, or 55 yep. meters. And then uh, it's uh, 37 meters through here. Uh, oh, in good. The turnaround loop. So, you know, it's industrial trackage. It doesn't even matter. It's fine. You know, it's funny. But prior to the spline update, I laid track way tighter than this and never really thought of it. Oh, except oh now, my god, that yeah, is that, that that was a king. That's that's, the king uh, that's an aggressive one. But yeah, I used to lay track like way tighter than this. I never really thought about it, and now that uh, oh, you set this up, that's so cool. The little bumper and everything. Yeah, you do with that's awesome in. with the bumper. That's perfect. Yeah, we're, we're gonna, gonna fix well, that. We'll do the the little uh, victory lap here and then back out. 
Yeah, we need to figure out a way to turn around the engines in this. I mean, we could always do the, like, just put a round table in part of the track, and yeah. I don't know how calm, would they drive through like that and then just flip the engine around, or I guess you would That was really common. Turntables and Ys were more common than balloon loops. So, yeah, it's actually pretty, the way we have most of the levels set up right now is a little un uh, <laughs> unprototypical so far, because, yeah, I mean, it really, it was really a game of, uh, <laughs> of a Y or a turntable, so... Right, so we'd make like a, a switch off line and then put a, a turntable, flip the engine around, bring it around the front. Mm. Yeah, could be a good excuse for us to try out the new big turntable that's in the game. True, true. Have the smelter right. if you want to go back from the smelter, you have to turn around. Uh, I guess I could fire up Betsy to regulate a reverser. Here we go. May as well. We may need both of them to pull all four of these up to 2%. I'll keep Betsy in low reg of like 25 because I don't have a lot of boiler pressure. Yeah, that's fine. Yep, gotta pull it forward. I'm riding in the wake car anyway. Oh, true. Yeah, I'm gonna, get in the, I'm gonna get in the wake car. Let the, uh, I let the stove go cold, though, and we've got the door open, so it's a little draft in here, so I'm gonna see about fixing that a little bit. There the we door. go. Oh, nice. I wish you could get up on the benches. You can't, it's, it sucks that you can't see what, you can't Yeah, just... John Railroadson is too tall for his own good. We actually kind of clip through right, the Right, you can't, sometimes. you can't, like, crouch and get up on the bench, and... And then, uh, you know, look out the windows. Yeah, that'd be, that'd be nice. The, uh, the, the other caboose is really nice for that. Yeah, with the so cool like sit and stuff. seat and everything. Where'd you go? What, are you on, are you in the roof? I hopped back up to the engine. Uh, your, this isn't your, really line. your flap is open, sir. My flap is open? Oh, my fire door? No, your, uh, I'm just being cooked. Your water, your water flap. Oh, my water hatch. It's fine. Cinders in the in the water helps with uh, boiling or something, maybe. Actually, what would happen if ash and dust gets in the water? It must just like there's uh, there's filters at the oh there are and filters at the the takeoff of the tender. It's not really the not the biggest thing. And, but I'm and with the way you that it works, I mean the boiler every so often like a build up and stuff. Oh yeah, every every 31 service days you have to take the engines out of service and clean the boiler out. Boilers have washout plugs in them and lots of washout plugs, maybe two or three inches in diameter, just depending on the engine. And you pull all the plugs out, and you run basically a fire hose and some uh, rods, basically, and you try and grab out as much of the boiler scale that builds up, because all the solids in the water and the hardness of the water, you know, doesn't boil, right? So that boils off and becomes solid stuff that sticks to the uh, inside of the barrel. So you, uh, you use treatment that breaks it up and scavenges the oxygen out to prevent rust. And then uh, when you do a boiler wash every 31 service days, you take care of all that stuff and then, you know, try and get as much of it out as you can. And yet you'd be surprised at how much stuff comes out of those things. They really want that wash when you get to those, the, you know, end of those service days. Yeah, I mean, I got hard water in my house and I already know how bad that is, let alone when you're boiling water, you know, all the sediment and stuff. Like water's never perfect, right? So it's right. like, yeah, all the sediment yep. things that would just come out of the water and the, uh, the railroad actually had some rules about certain tanks. Like they knew that on the the Coombrace and Toltec, they parted that uh, Denver and Rio Grande that still exists. There, for the longest time, there was uh, orders to not take water at Lava and Cresco because the water was bad. The water was worse. So if you had to stop there for water, you know, you, you goofed up. You could have made it to the next tank usually. So you had to explain why did you take water there because you're, you know, hurting the engine, basically. I really like this alignment. Even, even with all the bridges as it is, it's it's pretty. It's really pretty. Yeah, it's just really chill. It's a really chill railroad. You know, crap crap is some chill railroads. The Central Rio yeah. Pacific was known for their chill railroads. Chill and, railroading, you know, because they spent all their time polishing turds. You know, yeah, man, they, they, uh, they were in the turd polishing business. And everyone knows, like, turds must be transported on very smooth railroads, right? So it's That's like... how that works, yeah. Yeah, you can't have, you can't have bumpy railroads for the turds, so... Precisely. This shouldn't be a bridge, though. This should be fill for a little bit further than a bridge, but I can always... We'll, we'll probably fix this later, because, like, what we were saying, you need, like, um, like a bypass lane here so that... Yeah, we'll probably want a, a passing track in here, you know. Uh, I saw some comments, people like, you should double track everything, and it's like, well, if we had some centralized traffic control and, and easy ways to deal with crossovers and stuff, maybe, but, I mean, you've really never had double track on the narrow gauge. Like, right. dual track main was not a, not a thing, because that, 
is the antithesis of narrow gauge, right? Like the whole point is to make it small and narrow so that it fits places. So why would you then have two of them? Yeah. You know, <laughs> Makes so sense. they would have, you know, long passing sightings here and there at stationed locations. So that it was like, okay, this is a meet point on the railroad. So there's some stations that still exist in timetables for like the Durango and Silver Chain and the Cumbria and Soltec. Oh, we're going this parts way. Okay. Of the old, I guess we're going this way. I don't know. Should we be going somewhere else? Yeah, this is the freight depot. I wasn't sure if this switch was going to take us this way or not, but yeah, no, this is perfect. Well, I guess it is. That's fine. You can't get, uh, wait, I can't get back into the way car. Look, I can't jump because the, the thing blocks me. Oh, weird. It's funny. <laughs> then I can't yeah, jump. Got you. It's too bad. There's um, station locations on the CNT and then the Durango and Silverton that are not like stations. There was no station. Like Lobato is not a station, but it is a place where there's a passing track. So it's called out on the timetable as a station location. Or, or you know, there's other places like that. So Toltec is just a super long siding where they used to have 70 car oil trains pass each other. You know, crazy stuff on the narrow gauge. That's big engines. insane. So, but yeah, the rest of how long would that siding so be like miles? Like you'd have a miles long siding. Yeah, yeah, mile long is not unheard of. All right, well, mission success. Mission success. We, I we would built the get alignment. to Betsy, but I can't. So um, that's fine. She'll just uh, tow us off the end of the rail, I guess, at some point. Well, no, it's gonna keep going around. The, oh, we're gonna collide if we keep. Oh, it's fine. We'll just uh, hit ourselves. You might need to, uh, you might need to, I can't, I literally can't get around. Oh, there we go. I made it into Betsy. Let's go. <laughs> you just like lagged around everywhere on yeah, my end. Yeah, so I I'm jumped glad that you off made and it in. did the old warp trick, you know? It's a good move. Yeah. But yeah, pulling back into the freight depot, obviously we should uh, deliver some cordwood, maybe fix up the smelter a little bit, get that cleaned up. But You know, uh, fix the heist mess. <laughs> yeah, I wasn't going to say anything. There's only one really spicy corner there. The rest of it's pretty good. The rest of it's, like, kind of serviceable, so, yeah. Yeah. It's but yeah, let us know what you guys think of the cop. Like oh, alien, God, so. we need a break. We need a uh, Breaks! I'm, I'm on full break. But yeah, let us know what you guys think in the comments down below. Make sure you hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. Let us know what you think of Railroads Online. And, uh, you know, obviously give us your uh, thoughts and ideas. Except we are not going to double track everything. We're, we're going yeah, kibosh, to kiboshing that idea right now. It's not going to happen. Yep. Not much. happening. Sorry. Much, sorry. Happen. Love the idea, but no. No. We're going to have timetable. Timetable. People yep. are going to wait. You're going to wait. Wait you're for gonna, the next train wait, to clear. Wait, wait for the trains. Yeah. That's the point. All right, we'll yep. see you next time. Bye. Bye.